Hello, welcome uh, to this presentation, uh, the Sultan 2020. Um, uh, today we will talk about uh, an incident response that we have to, to deal with um, from an attacker which is alleged to be TA505. So we will see the case, uh, how we manage incident response, the tool used, and uh, how to find the, the backdoors uh, that uh, currently uh, this group uh, seems to be using, which is named MSDB bot. So who I am, who are we? I'm Paul Young. I'm uh, leading the incident response team of Excellent Services, which is uh, Luxembourgish uh, and Belgium uh, uh, IT security uh, company. Uh, we're doing incident response mostly in Belgium, Luxembourg, and uh, some uh, in Africa. So the case. So this context is uh, back in uh, December 19. Um, a Belgian hospital got uh, some information from uh, IOC uh, lists that uh, one of the IOC is matching uh, on uh, their uh, firewall logs. And on some servers, they have a black screen, a command from black. Uh, they find that on some console. So what's happened? Um, the thing is that uh, it's begin with uh, some matching uh, phishing campaign. Uh, there are two uh, massive campaigns, each uh, delivering to more than 100 mailboxes. Um, the, the campaign are uh, a week apart, and uh, it was uh, injected uh, by uh, using an uh, empty uh, relay of uh, Russian university. So the mail didn't contain any files. Uh, it contained only uh, links and an invitation to one up. What up is a sharing file platform, it's like a, a Dropbox, for example. Um, and uh, when uh, the customer click on the link, of course, uh, it is uh, redirected, redirected to through a German reduction um, minification service uh, named Merki.de. And uh, finally, go back uh, to the backend, uh, which is owned by the attacker. So it downloads a document. Uh, which is, of course, a uh, malicious uh, document, an office one. Um, what is interesting in this case is that the, um, the click on the execution of the, the document was done uh, 15 days after the phishing because the guy was uh, in holidays uh, and uh, the CC was still waiting for, for the click uh, at, uh, 15 days after. So the document contains uh, two, well, of course, uh, a VBA script, and which is interesting to see uh, is that uh, the, the document itself contains the droppers. So there are inside the Office document two uh, PE, a uh, 132 bit and 164 one uh, byte, um, and this dropper is named get2. Um, depending on the version of the office, so in this case it was a 32-bit uh, version of uh, Word, uh, the right uh, DLL is called and executed. So uh, there is a decoy, um, decoy window uh, during the, the ex execution. So once executed, uh, the dropper, uh, get2, uh, reports to another host. Uh, it means that it's uh, already the third on the different website. Uh, it reports the host name, uh, the username of the customer, the version of the operating system, and the list of the running processes. Um, the configuration is directly um, uh, it are coded in the data itself, so it's a uh, part of the executable. Uh, depending on the result, uh, it receives another payload. In our case, uh, it has uh, we have some information about that. It's received an executable named profile 3.7.exe. We don't really know what it is uh, since we didn't achieve to, uh, to retrieve this file, but soon after that, it installed uh, another executable, which is uh, SDB boot. So in our case, uh, SDB boot uh, is uh, the backdoor used by the group. SDB boot is a fileless malware. Uh, it means that, uh, well, uh, you have a small part in uh, an executable on the disk, but in this executable, there is nothing interesting. Everything is stored in the registry. Uh, the registry location, we will see that, uh, is uh, using a random name in a random location. 
uh, and the small uh, executable on the disk, uh, small PE, um, is only launching it, so uh, it do basically nothing interesting and uh, it's lower AV detection. Uh, we'll see that every loader is different by workstation, so it's quite complicated for the incident response. So how does it work? Uh, first, the persistence is done uh, simply uh, by using the current version run key uh, in there. Uh, there is a, a value uh, random that DLL. In this case, it was uh, xrbvagc dot DLL, and um, run DLL is used to execute uh, this uh, this DLL. The DLL by itself uh, contains the configuration of the location of the SDB boat in the registry. It means it contains the path uh, in the registry, but also uh, the UID of the user. So it's really, uh, if you have a launcher, it is unique per user. Um, when the launcher is um, launch, of course, um, yeah, the UID gives give to it the, the link uh, to the registry path where the SDB boot is. Here you can find then um, there is a, a decoy value at the beginning of the, the registry value, and then you have the, the launcher. So the, the, the SDB boot, uh, first you have the decoy string, then you have a shell code, and a compressed uh, uh, executable. The shell code uncompressed in memory is uh, executable and launch it. The configuration is not obfuscated at all. It's uh, jQuery in the PE. Uh, of course, it's compressed, but uh, well, it's there. So you will see there is uh, some place in the reserved uh, field by both CFG, both CFG, and uh, the configuration puts there. The, the way the registry is written, it's always the same. So it's in, uh, for a user in the hash key current user software, Microsoft. Then you have three letters and uh, then uh, one letter value of the, the key. So what is SDB bot? Uh, well, it's a backdoor. Um, it uses, uh, in our case, what using one command control. Uh, it uh, fetches the external IP and reports it once launched. Uh, it uses um, a proprietary communication, so it's not HTTP, it's not HTTPS, it's a binary connection. It is able to download file. You may perform file operation, add, remove, uh, create a folder, read a file, and so on. Uh, you may execute uh, you may execute commands and stream screen and also what we we think it was uh, heavily used uh, for what TCP connection. So what does the attacker? Uh, the first thing we see, uh, which uh, appear to be one and um, twenty minutes after the first connection of FDB bot to the CC, is uh, MS seventeen ten. Uh, directly on one domain controller. So, well, it was uh, quite easy. It's a low hanging fruit. And uh, the attacker is, uh, well, running a system in a domain controller uh, quite fast at first, the first compromission. So, uh, for persistency, I create a user uh, named support with a password, support with a zero. That's a bad password. And uh, put it in the admin group. Then, uh, what does uh, the, the attacker? Uh, mostly, he uses uh, two things, uh, Metaprater and SMB exec. Uh, we found out some Metaprater directly connected back to an IP uh, in session. And we also uh, find some Metaprater in listening mode, uh, and he, he uses uh, it uh, as lateral movement like that uh, from one to the other. Um, we saw that there is a, the spread is used by uh, SMB exec, and uh, we saw a lot of artifact uh, of, uh, of SMB exec on uh, many servers. So there's uh, only three, 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 three tools that he is: uh, TinyMet, uh, which is a repackage metaprater stager, uh, which is locally deployed uh, on named as the wsuth.exe. Uh, SMB exec and of course uh, Metaprater. So after uh, one day, uh, after uh, obviously 20 hours after the initial compromise of the first domain controller, uh, he extracts uh, the, the SAM database. 
So he tried uh, three things. We don't know if he got the issue or if it's a part of the standard procedure. Uh, he exports all the registry, SAM, security, and system uh, by using reg.exe. It used proc dump to dump the LSISS uh, memory and then a tool to uh, power dump. You will see that it used uh, the until folder. It has done that a uh, couple of times. Uh, this folder was there. Uh, it was a part of some driver um, uh, on the disk. So uh, by doing that, uh, it deployed and uh, visits more than 50 server and workstation. Uh, some, uh, we will see that after, some server, uh, on some servers, the boot was deployed at system level, which uh, is uh, using a different kind of uh, persistence series. So we will see that after. Uh, so mainly, as said before, Metapreter and SMB exec. So, Attribution time. So the first time we see on the ping google.ca, we will clear about that. That's probably Canadian people. Of course, uh, that's a joke. It's not true. Uh, but well, it was fun for us uh, in Belgium to see someone pinging Google Canada. So attribution is was done first by report of the, the Belgian set, um, which come from the NSSE. And uh, our uh, uh, Trinantel also uh, pointed out uh, some uh, some same uh, backend. Uh, we found out also a couple of reports from ASEC Proofpoint, uh, which after and during the incident, uh, showing us that well, it's the same kind of attacks with some not always the same tools, but a lot of uh, tools used and the same methodology. For example, in the paper of ASEC on in October 19, uh, you will see that the backdoor uh, was uh, not, was not same. It's named Hami, but uh, well, it's the same name and, uh, and so on. So there's a couple of things which uh, are looking the same. So uh, we have uh, managed to do the incident response uh, on such an uh, incident. Just to have a big picture, uh, the breach occurred on Friday. Uh, the domain was compromised uh, the next day, uh, on Saturday. And uh, one week after, uh, the customer got uh, the IOC and, uh, and um, detected the intruder. Uh, so they closed the internet for the server because at the time of the detection, they only have uh, the IP of the interpreter. Uh, they didn't detect and see the DB bot yet. And three days after that, we have begun uh, the incident response. So it was a big environment. Uh, of course, it's uh, an hospital, so it's a flat network. Uh, you have a lot of old things, uh, Windows 7 and patch uh, things, and more than Windows 7 even. Um, yeah, and uh, there is no incident response preparation. You have uh, a lot of logs to collect with our nuts and flights, so it was not so, so, so easy to get into. So the first thing that we have to spot and was easy to spot is the um, uh, SMB exec artifact. When they play with SMB exec, you may find some BTO BTO services. Uh, there are no renaming and no try to do it. And you may also find some uh, underscore underscore output folders on the root of the C drive. Uh, that's an uh, artifact created by SMB exec. So uh, using uh, event log and using remote folder scan, we were able to find out uh, some servers. Um, for a listening measure printer, which was uh, also uh, done on some servers, uh, we use a map and uh, we uh, scan the whole network to uh, detect the uh, ATH listen port of uh, some measure printer. Then um, we Sometimes it was uh, installed as service, sometimes it was launched by SMB exec. Uh, we found the TinyMet. Uh, and uh, TinyMet is quite easy to, to spot, uh, as you can see there. Uh, you have a TinyMet uh, executable, which is in the case is the WSO.exe. Then the method used for the Metapreter Stager, uh, so in our case, what's reverse TCP. And uh, the IP and the PO of the, the CC. So it, quite, it was uh, quite easy to spot that uh, on logs and uh, then in, in a firewall logs. So here's a picture, the first picture when the detection occurs by uh, using the IOC given by the set uh, Belgian, the Belgian set, sorry. Um, we got a Metropolitan CC and we got a couple of server compromised. 
uh, quickly, we found out the, the patient zero, and then we detect the SDB boat running on it. The problem, once we did that, that we find out a lot of other server and workstation connecting to the SDB boat CC and not always connecting also to the interpreter. So uh, we know that it was a TA50 fail, and um, TA, what they are doing, they are doing ransomware. They are launching one somewhere. In this case, it's uh, they are alleged to use club. So, well, uh, it's an hospital. Uh, one week and a half, we are for sure detected since the customer has um, shut down the, the internet and server side. So, well, it was funny. So, uh, what are the action done and what were the fears? Uh, action done is internet is down. Okay, for only for servers. For the moment, and uh, there, there are some discussion always in this case. And should we shut down everything? So we claim yes, so that the business should continue. And in hospital, the business is complicated. So um, then we ask uh, immediate calling of all the known bad IPs. It was done, and uh, we have a solution to detect uh, running metapreter listening in the in the IT. So uh, that was the action right now done. The problem is that uh, we still have more after a map scan. We found out that we still have more than three Android hosts vulnerable to NS7010. So, okay, uh, you are not confident. Uh, then, uh, when club with build to launch, uh, and then uh, how to find out other SDB boot? Maybe SDB boot, uh, some other are present and are using all their um, command and control. That was the fear. To detect SDB boot uh, in, uh, in such environment with no preparation, it's not so simple. Uh, SDB boot is unique, uh, has a for file for the launcher, for example. Um, there are unique hash pair sample. And the registry, the location is random, so it's not so easy. So first, we are not able to detect it on a file base. That was not possible. So we take a look to try to find a little script, a little script to find them uh, using the registry, try to find some path with three letter and a sub key with one letter. It was running, but the problem is to deploy that on every endpoint. So it's not so simple. So then, uh, by looking at the code of uh, SDB boot, uh, we found out that uh, when it is launched, uh, it fetches the external IP using ip happycom in this case, and uh, use an art coded uh, user agent. It was nice, but uh, the customer is not able to see the user agent since uh, it didn't have any proxy. So we just be able to detect uh, host names that are going to ip happycom and um, well, that's not so easy since uh, it's uh, occurred only once when you start uh, the bot. So it's not reliable. Uh, and we try to find other methods to be sure to, to fetch everything. We, at this time, we are not sure that ip-ip.com is the only service used to fetch the external IP. So what we see also is that the, the communication part, the network part of uh, SDB bot is uh, quite easy to spot. Um, it uses a binary protocol, but there is a really simple uncheck. When SDB bot is starting, it is sent to the CC uh, four bytes, which are 0000D echo, um, and uh, DEC0, and the server answers the same. And after that, uh, the communication is established and it starts to, to sharing and receiving and, well, start to, to work. Um, it's easy to spot on the network with an IDS. But in this case, again, uh, our customer didn't have any ideas. Uh, it was located in Brussels, so it takes time to build and set up an ideas uh, quickly. So it was not usable. So what we found out also is that uh, SDD Boot um, contains a solution uh, to override the configuration. The configuration of the malware may be uh, read from the executable uh, or from uh, a file ip.txt. The file ip.txt may be on the local drive at the root of the C drive or in the folder where we run the SDB bot. So it's worth another solutions to be sure that we uh, find out all, all other 
uh, SDB bot, even the ones that didn't use the RNM server booking.com. Uh, so we deploy uh, IP text everywhere and hopefully and uh, happy. We were happy of that, that uh, we didn't find uh, more SDB bots. Uh, all the SDB bots that we see uh, were already known and uh, connecting to uh, DRM server booking back then. On the server, uh, it was not the same uh, persistency. The persistency is more complicated. It used the applica application compatibility shims. Um, so it's a, let's say, a special configuration registry where you may patch some file, uh, hot patching, for example. Um, and uh, SDB boot, uh, when run uh, with system privilege, uh, use this kind of persistence. This persistence response was uh, well uh, described by FireEye in 2017. Uh, we will have uh, the, the link at the end of the presentation. So in this case, um, SDB boot is not a standalone process, but is, uh, is uh, injected inside the win logon of the servers. So for all the servers, uh, we use uh, our uh, um, tool, the GRR, uh, our antenna response tool, uh, Google Rapid Response, to deploy an agent uh, quickly and to scan the whole uh, server with the simple URLs uh, restricting to the win logon that exit process. And we again uh, receive all the configuration of the SDB boot running, and hopefully uh, there was only one uh, DRM, uh, one CC, which is a DRM that server booking.com. So we deploy a couple of uh, solutions, as you can see, to to find out the SDB boot, and hopefully they were not so other SDB boot. So. Once we block the CC, once we block the uh, metapreter, we have cut down uh, all access to the attacker. So what we have seen is that uh, TF, TA sorry, uh, 505 is, uh, uh, is fast, they are fast. Um, they are using tools, uh, tools that they know how to uh, deal with. Uh, they are using it since months, uh, as you can see, if you take a look at the compilation time of, uh, of the tools. Um, but they are really, really fast in execution. Uh, there is, for example, for the second campaign uh, of, uh, of uh, phishing, uh, they are registering the, the day of the campaign, the day before the day of the phishing campaign. And uh, once uh, they get access to the Maldoc, uh, less than 20 hours after, they are domain admin and have extracted all the domain's information. So they are really, well, uh, it was easy because they are from uh, Eternal Blue Open, but uh, they are knowing uh, what they do. So that was for the incident and the answer. Uh, now the question is, since we have a couple of uh, customers in uh, CM, uh, with, uh, we are doing some suck for them and uh, we are managing the CM, the idea is to how to find uh, all the SDB boats uh, before, before uh, uh, the uh, club uh, is launched. So the problem of SDB boat is that this malware uh, is fileless. Um, and uh, the way it is done with the configuration inside the launcher uh, will we'll do is that uh, there are rare and sandboxes. Uh, it's hard to spot some sample in the to time, the right, so how to, to deal to have them. Um, so the idea came from, uh, from the network. Uh, the, they are really um, using clever persistence, but they are also using really simple network connectivity. If I send four bytes to the uh, to the SDB boot server, uh, it send me back four bytes, and that's the way uh, that we may use uh, to detect them. Um, so to validate that, we have created a fake uh, uh, SDB boot server in Python. Uh, we have uh, put uh, SDB boot uh, client uh, SDB boot uh, in front of it, and once it was working well. Uh, we are creating we we are creating uh, a scanner for that. We cannot uh, use mass scan since we need to send hand back. So we create um, NS script. This NS script uh, send only send four bytes, and uh, when the four bytes are the same received, uh, it declares that uh, it's uh, it's an SDB boot backend. So it's quite easy. To do that, but the problem is that uh, it's not so easy to scan the whole internet. 
since we are not using Mascan but only uh, a map, and since it's only on port 443, which means, well, most of the website and the internet, it's not so simple to scan the whole internet. So the, the idea is to, since uh, Nmap is slow, um, the idea was to have a lot of Nmap in parallel, but well, that's not cheap, so it was not a solution. So the, the reflection was how to reduce the scope of the uh, IP ranges to scan. Um, there is a lot of uh, hostname uh, used by SDV Vote and uh, used by uh, Alec to uh, TA505. Um, there is a lot of them which look the same. And it's look, uh, if you take some, a few examples like this, it's look always some labels which are stick together. Uh, so we have, for example, DRAM uh, da, uh, dash server dash booking.com. And you may find other with some of the labels. So what we found out also is that some uh, IP are here used. Uh, if you take a look at uh, our DRM server booking.com, uh, if you ask to the passive DNS, uh, you may see other IP having this hostname. So it seems that this guy, um, and they are doing a lot of work, so they like to reuse infrastructure. So they like to reuse infrastructure and probably uh, the idea was uh, they don't like to uh, learn um, how to uh, buy another domain, how to buy another, um, another hosting. It should be maybe always the same authors, for example. That was the, the, the idea. So what we have done, we have uh, looked at uh, all the reports, all what we have uh, as a report to fetch all the domains alleged to uh, TA505. And we split all the domain by labels, uh, DRAM, Cloud, Microsoft. And then we have generated all the possible words by using two and three labels. And then uh, all these alt name generated, we have resolved them. And we have uh, kept the autonomous number. Uh, the idea was to find out some uh, network where it could be possible to have some uh, TA505 uh, systems. Uh, we run the NSS script against this uh, autonomous system, and it was working. We find out 12 SDTB boards. So, how to validate that it's not an honeypot and it's really a SDTB board? Well, uh, that's what we have done. First, we see that uh, SDTB boards are invisible to Shodan, for example. Uh, I think it's because uh, since uh, you, if you come with an HTTP, you get a reset. If you come well with anything else that's the, the magic uh, deco handshake, you got a reset. So that's why, because uh, SDTB boot is not visible on uh, Shodan. So that's the first thing. Then we see that uh, most of the system are Ubuntu based. Uh, there is one Debian, and uh, if you send something else than uh, Deco, you have the result. So it's quite easy to to spot uh, to spot this DDB uh, and to remove from this list uh, some uh, honeypot. Because of course uh, you may find some honeypots. Uh, the strange things that we find out, uh, we are not, we don't know what it is. Uh, maybe it's related to. Uh, to, uh, to the Ubuntu itself, but uh, on uh, most of them, except uh, when the Debian 10, uh, you have the port 800, which is uh, in listening mode. So here we go. Uh, in June of uh, this year, after uh, using data from passive DNS since the beginning of uh, of, uh, of the of 19, uh, sorry, uh, January 19 until uh, June uh, 2020. So with passive DNS and the scanner, we were able to uh, find out 10 host names used by um, this group. Uh, on this uh, 10 host names, you have a nine host names, which are ERP and uh, 11 backend uh, active. Um, in, um, in June, uh, the company, uh, German company uh, Telecom, has uh, sent a report uh, which claims that uh, now uh, SDB Bot is using uh, TLS. Uh, we don't have any uh, any sample yet, so I can't confirm. But uh, in this case, it will mean that uh, this solution will not, not uh, work anymore. But in uh, August. Um, 
we found out another uh, server uh, located in Germany. And um, of course, we saw also some uh, three other uh, server, uh, three other names well, which uh, are right and now uh, not active anymore. So we will see. Um, we don't know what the uh, future is coming. Is it many groups? Is it uh, some uh, whole server? Is it some false positive? We can tell. So um, if you want access to, to this tracker, just uh, contact us. Uh, we will be happy to, to share the, the, this information. So just for finishing, uh, here's a list of uh, the IOCs that we have. Uh, as you can see, um, the domain knowledge to, to this group is uh, just uh, enormous, it's gigantesque in French. It's uh, huge. Um, well, maybe there are some mistakes, but uh, well, it's uh, really impressive. Uh, some uh, tactics and uh, techniques, and of course, uh, references of uh, all the papers, uh, all the people uh, working against these guys, and thanks to them. Uh, thank you, Virabilta, uh, for watching me, listening to me. It was uh, quite strange to do it uh, remotely. Uh, thanks a lot, and uh, take care.